Well, good morning, friends. Look at that. We're in daylight again. Yay! This morning, we're on our way to an estate sale, but it's a picker's sale, which to me, judging from the pictures, looks like you have to pick your way through stuff, which that's actually kind of exciting to me because I do like to treasure hunt. So I'll rummage through some stuff. Let me even you out. You're a little bit crooked there. Maybe that's a little bit better. I don't know. Anyway. Um, it's put on by L&M, which I'm hoping that means I get to sign in and then sit in my car and read until it starts at 8.30. They also have another one going, a regular estate sale, that starts at 9. So, and it looks pretty decent too. So I'm curious to see how what this does for the crowd. Kind of hoping it makes a thinner crowd at the picking one. So I can get in the first group and be... But I guess if you have to pick through it... You know, that takes some time, and God's always good to me and gives me what he intends for me to find, so I'll pick what I pick. There's a second one that's this afternoon in Cameron at 1, which is about 40 minutes from where we are, for, according to the address. And so if I do well this morning and find a lot of good stuff, then I'm not going to go to the one in Cameron because i got to conserve my budget. But if I don't find a lot of stuff then I will go to the one in Cameron. So we'll see how it goes, but I'm excited. I'm excited to do some rummaging and junking and picking and see what I find. And I will be happy to share with you all what I find. Hopefully it's lots and good. So talk to you again soon. Well, that was an interesting picker sale. So um, the sale was due to start at 8.30 and it was put on by L&M, which means you get a sign-in sheet. So I signed in and there's probably 18 to 20 people in front of me, I'm guessing. One lady that signed in in front of me, because he was writing our names down for us, had three other people with her. But they weren't actually with her. He just, she just said, oh, they'll be with me, so add them to the list. thought that was kind of a little shady. Big Hair Sheila and Wayne were there. Been a while since I've seen her. She was all fancy and ready to go. Um, but 12 minutes before it was ready to start, so I don't know anybody else out there, but I have IBS. So when my body says it's time to go, it's time to go. And sometimes it doesn't pick the right times to decide to go. And I don't know if any of you are in that boat, but it kind of sucks. But anyway, 12 minutes till my body was giving me messages that, hey, should find a bathroom. So I thought, well, just gonna have to wing it, see what happens. So I found a gas station and showed up, and all the bathrooms are out of order. I'm like, oh, I don't need this. So on the way to the second gas station, I'm debating do I even go back? You know, is it even worth trying to get back there, find a spot, and get into the sale? It's kind of too late to try and get in the other sales because they start at 9, which means I'm going to be way down further on the list or the wait, wait. So I'm like, what do I do? Do I just say, screw it, I'm going to go home and do something else? But I kind of felt nudging from God that he's like, just trust me, go back to the sale. So I'm like, okay. And on the way back to the sale, I got to thinking, well, since I had signed in, Worst case, if they've already called my name and I show up, they'll just let me in because they've already called my name. Or, if they haven't called my name, I'll wait, which is what I would be doing anyway if I had been there. So, I parked, I got up, and as I was walking up to the house, they called my name. So, I got in. And I am glad I did because I found a lot of stuff, a lot of good things. And what was really cool is basically for my entire haul, they just charged me 50 bucks for the whole haul. And there was a lot of cool stuff for my shop and for myself. So I'll be sharing it with you shortly. <laughs> well, friends, who's ready for the haul? Um, I'll try and be as quick as I can, but I got a lot of stuff for 50 bucks. I'm pretty excited. So first off, I got this brass plant holder riser. I'm gonna, I know exactly where I'm putting it on my patio. And it was out in the garage. I had to really do some rummaging picking for that. Then there's this little guy. It does still stay marked on it. Let's see. Solid brass made in India. So, 
always like these. My husband and I always think we should be able to have a candle and those old stocking hats and walk around the house. Who goes there? That's bedtime or something like that. Oh, there's Lenny complaining because I'm not giving enough attention. Then I added to my silverware that I absolutely love, the tarnished silverware. You can see the detailing. I love these little children's spoons. And then there's this spoon. And I don't know what it's for. I'm assuming it's some kind of relish. Maybe if anyone knows what this type of spoon is used for, let me know. Oh, stop. Yeah, there's your sister. Pay attention to her. And there's this spoon. I just love all the detailing up there. And this one says extra plate original, original Roberts. W.M. Roberts, Rogers Manufacturing. So if that means anything to anybody, I just like them because I like the way they look. And they're detailing. And I love the patina on them. Then I have this ladle. Um, I'm assuming maybe a, for salad dressing. I can't imagine it's gravy because that's not much gravy. Or some little treat. And it's another Rogers. Then there's these two. But I, I love the patterns on the tops as well as the bottoms. So, and what would these be used for? Does anyone know what these were? They're slotted, you know, is it for a type of vegetable or something where you want to drain it when you scoop it out? And then this one's plain, but I love the detailing on this one. But I, I don't care that they have patina. That's part of what I love about them. Then I also got this little guy. And on the bottom, he says Jimco stainless steel marked Japan. So I'm assuming maybe a creamer or syrup or something. I wonder if it was used in restaurant wear, but I think it's fun. Plus, I like I like that. <laughs> and then I've got um, two books. This one by Corey Ten Boom, Each New Day. It has some wear on it, and I might already have this one. I have a habit of buying books I already have, so we'll have to see if I already have it or not. And then this one I know I did not have, Christmas with Victoria, 1998. So Victoria is a magazine, if you don't know what it's about, and it's all about, like, Victorian English-style decorating and living. And it's a beautiful magazine. I think it comes out six times a year, so every other month. Um, I used to get it a long time ago, and I su recently subscribed to it again. I'm debating whether I'm going to stay subscribed to it or not. But I do love, like, all the different things. There's recipes in here, but it shows you, like, let me see if I can find, like, setting a table or decorating. And I get this as 1998, but... I don't care. Style is timeless. I mean, look at the... Plus, hey, recipes. I'm always about recipes. Like, I could make some brown sugar apple bars or rosemary shortbread cookies or pralines, which those sound amazing. I love pralines. Um, but just, yeah, Christmas dinner and special treats and then even, like, cross-stitch. So... Anyway, check out their magazine. There's another channel I watch, um, The Daily Connoisseur with Jennifer L. Scott, and she's actually a guest writer for their magazine this year. So, and she's written the book Daily Connoisseur and um, some other ones. I love her channel, love her books, and her writing style is amazing. So, but anyway, I thought for inexpensive, I can definitely get that. Then I picked up this picture because it reminds me of stuff my mom had. And honestly, it looks like something that she would honestly like. I'll just have to find a frame for it. But hopefully it's not reflecting too much where you can see the little fairy with the birds and the sun. Or maybe it's an angel. Or maybe it's a little girl and she just looks like a fairy because of the birds. I think it's a little girl because I don't see any wings. I just see birds by her that kind of gave the illusion of wings maybe. But I think she's very beautiful. Then next, the very first thing I actually picked up was this pail. I don't know why, but I love this old pail, and I 
already know what I'm going to do with it. I think I'm going to put one of my faux plants on the patio on it and then put it on top of here like this on the catio. And then inside I cup, tucked a couple of treasures. There's this little New Testament. Love old, old Bibles. But this one on the inside, and it came with a penny. Oops. Came with a penny. Its name is for Karen Culpreth at 224 South Plymouth Street, Fayetteville, North Carolina. The nearest relative is Stanley Culpreth at the same address. So love seeing the old inscriptions. I didn't find a date for like how old it is. And it's just the New Testament. But, oh, and there's paper clip to passage. Oh, it's Psalms and prayers and where to look for certain things in the Bible. But love these old little Bibles. There we go. Found my penny, 1976. And then I found this in its original box, a Bradley travel alarm. I don't know if it still works, but I remember my grandpa Claremont Peck having one. And as a child, I don't know why, but I was always impressed with it. It's marked Made in Japan, but it just folded up on itself. And I would be curious if it still works. I might have to play with it, wind it, set it, and see what happens. But it's a beautiful clock and made for travel. And I love that it came in its original box. So that was a fun find. Then I got this, and it says on the back it's marked that it's from Target. But I thought it'd be fun for this Halloween. Who goes there? And I just like the strike, striking graphics of the black and yellow. And I don't know where I'll put it, but I just think it's fun. So then I found this to put on my wall. I'm thinking about putting it up here. But this copper home sweet home. But yeah, I was thinking maybe I'd put it like right here because I have copper here and copper over there. And I don't know. What do you think? Let me let me know. Should I put it up there or find a different spot for it? Then I also got this tray and has a good fair amount of patina. I wonder if it was a butter dish and the lid's missing. But and I'm debating if it's going to go on my shop or if I actually will use it somewhere. But I do like the shape. It's just a little bit different. So it'd be fun to put things in. Like these two glass bottles I got. I thought they, I'm, I'm assuming this is a vase because it's got all these little raised dots on it. So it's on the bottom, Ikea, made in China. So, and this one has not really any markings that I can tell. But I mean, that's kind of cute. But I don't know what I'll use them for, but I just like the shape of them. So just buying whatever strikes my fancy. Then I found this guy. And actually, I saw him in the pictures, and I was really hoping to get him. He's dirty on the inside. He needs some cleaning. But my daughter's going to take this, my daughter Haley, because it reminds her of Grandma Terry and put it in her kitchen so she can hang him. But like I said, I will try and clean him because he's him. him's a bit dirty. Then I got myself an aluminum baking pan. I love these old aluminum pans. They're perfect for baking. And I make my own sourdough bread probably about every two weeks. My sourdough starter stays in the refrigerator until I need it. And then I take it out a couple of days before so that I can get it fed and get it ready to bake some bread. And that usually makes me four loaves of bread. I do have a video I can link in the description where I actually did my sourdough. So if you want to watch, if you're wanting to learn how to do sourdough, I had tried for months to try and get it to work and failed and tried and failed and tried, gave up for a month or so, then tried again. I don't know how many times I tried. I know a lot of people like to go over to the channel Farmhouse on Boone and follow Lisa there and how she does her sourdough. And I did try that. And for whatever reason, it really wasn't successful for me. I watched Doug and Stacy. Um, I forget what their channel is called, but they're homesteaders that live on land and have for about 14 years and grow 90% of their food on their own. So they know everything about homestead and, and, and Stacy did one on sourdough. And so I kind of, kind of just took 
stuff from Lisa, stuff from Stacy, and stuff from other things I've read on the internet, kind of just incorporated it into my own process, and so shared that. But anyway, I like the aluminum pans. To me, they just tend to bake better, and they don't as rust as badly as like the newer pans. So I just, when I see them cheap, I like to pick them up and use them. I also got myself this basket. I know everybody's into baskets late, lately and hanging them, and I had toyed with the idea of hanging it in my kitchen, but I just don't know where I'd put it. And I'm not even sure what I'll use it for, but I love that the base of it is a wooden base at the bottom. I like the shape and the color and the handle. So I will figure something out. And then I got this basket or tray for my daughter Haley because she likes to have, she's got, she's got boho decorating. So I thought it's a perfect little tray that she can use to put stuff in or to hang it on her wall because she does have a collage with several baskets on her wall. So whenever I see interesting or unique or cheap baskets at estate sales, I like to add to her collection. And now the last, and this is some of the littler stuff, I found these measuring spoons that are all heart-shaped. I thought that was quite cute. So I can use those on my tear tray to decorate with. I like those. Then I found some just old fashioned ones, which I already have a set of. So these will probably go in my shop if somebody would like some old fashioned measuring spoons to have for display. Then I found a set, or they're not really a set, but three. Um, and it looks like made in Hallberg. This one's 1998 and it's a Christmas ornament. And I'm just kind of partial to cats. And then this one is also 1998. A little Siamese in a little basket. And then the last one, also 1998, a little kitty in a suitcase decorated for Christmas. And I just thought they were super sweet. So I don't know if I'm going to put any of them in my shop. If I did, I'm definitely keeping this one because this one is my favorite. I'm not sure why. Maybe because it looks a little bit like my Lenny, my first kitty ever. But we'll see because I do love cats. Then I also, speaking of cats, got this little, I'm not sure what it is because it has a slit here. So I could put like a place card or a business card or something. It does have on the bottom, B Design Made in USA. So my friend Kayla from Little Cahaba Junkin sent me some ephemera. So there's totally little things I could stick in there to help it sit around because I like the little sweet face. Hopefully you can see it. And then I need to figure out how to clean these. So if anyone has some idea, but old children's gloves. I love the little flower on here. I just think they're so sweet, but they definitely need some cleaning. They were actually out in the garage of all places, but I thought they were sweet. Then they had some miniatures, which I love. And I noticed when I got this one home, it's missing a piece right here. So I've got some ideas on how to repair it, but I think it's very sweet and it has a fabric little seat. And two more miniatures. I love this one with all its little tiny drawers that open. I thought even if I don't put it in my miniature room, it would be fun to just set as part of the decor anywhere because it's just fun and cute. But the last miniature, this was my favorite. This old fashioned, I don't know if I can get the bottom drawer open, but the top drawer opens. It's like a little writing desk. And then these pull out and this folds down and look at that. And then you have little drawers in here, but those old secretaries, I just love all the details. I think they're so sweet and cute. So this one to me would be fun setting out somewhere as well. So they don't have to stay in my miniature room. But anyway, there is my big estate pick and haul and not sure what all is going in the shop and what else stay in here, but remains to be seen. So thanks for joining me for this. First for me, a picking estate hall. I've never been to a state hall, a picker's one. And 
judging by how it went, I'd go again because it was kind of fun. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but Big Hair Sheila and Wayne were there. I haven't seen her for probably a month, a hot minute. And a few others, I don't know their names, but I recognize their faces. I've seen them at other estate sales. I mean, there's only maybe about 200 some thousand people. And when there's only one or two estate sales a week, you're bound to run into people, you know. So anyway, thanks for joining me, friends. And if you have any suggestions, like telling me what some of these spoons and stuff are for or where I should hang this, leave it below in the comments. Let me know. By the way, until April 16th, I am having a sale in my Etsy shop, 30% off. So if you use the code clean, spring cleaning, um, you'll get 30% off everything in the shop. And I will leave the link with the user code in the description. So check out my shop. See if there's anything you want. 30% off. It's a great sale. And I'll probably have one again in the fall, but this is the one going right now till April 16th. So thank you for joining me, friends. What do we do? Let's put it up here because that's kind of my first spot. There we go. Now I have room to add stuff on the other side too. I do like a lot of things on my wall, but then I like a lot of things. Okay. Ignore the pawn. I will be cleaning it next week, but I was trying to wait it out. But so I don't know if you remember in another video when I got this plant and I put it in this little guy, but this little guy feels too little. So my plan is to do this. And then I love this bucket so it can go here. And then this guy, whoops, just a minute. I had two hands, but so maybe I'll pull some out here for the back a little bit get a little bit more depth I might have to get some rocks and weight down my bucket which I probably will do there we go and I know it's not trendy to have fake plants but when you have cats especially one in particular named Lexi Mame who likes to eat the plants fake it is because I can't hang them all over besides yeah look at the terrible dust gotta clean the pollen I'll be my project next week indeed Darren came out and did blow some of it off the bottom of the floor but look at that you can see where Miss Mika Bean has been up here her footprints so that's part of North Carolina time to clean the pollen next week Get the layer of dust off. It's the struggle is real. So I think for the basket, for now anyway, I'm going to switch out the cat's toys from this basket to that basket. And yes, I know these are weird. We call them the creepy hands, but the cats love them because they like how it feels on their backs. Like, see, up here came Lexi. She wants some creepy hands. They're so weird. But yeah, and then they like these little things that have little nubs on them. But I'm going to put all the toys in here because I like the look of this basket better. So there we go. There's your toys. And there's the creepy hands. I think it's because of the fingertips. I think we got them at Target and they're supposed to be like for salad tongs, but cats just have them for creepy hands. And then it can sit over there and it looks cute. And this, I'm not sure. If I thought I could sell it in my shop and figure out how to ship it, I would. What do you think? Should I try and sell it in my shop and figure out how to ship it? I mean, it's not heavy. It's just going to be a big box and I'm, I can pack it, cover it, but or do I save it because I might repurpose it elsewhere? Thoughts? Well, thank you for joining me for my haul and the little mini style. And let me know what you think about some of my questions. Look forward to seeing your comments and come back and see me again real soon.